Hey guys, Ben here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today is kind of one of those days where I've got a whole mix of emotions going on. Uh, I'm sure like a lot of you, especially anybody in the Louisiana area, we are in one of the worst drought slash heat waves of my life at least, where if you look at this ground right here, this is pretty much the standard for our whole area. Uh, yards and pastures are burnt up. Pretty much nothing left for these animals to eat. There's something like 130 wildfires in just Louisiana alone right now. We've got an order, a burn ban, which includes like barbecue pits and everything. There's literally no open flames allowed. These cows are out here suffering, just soaking up some shade. But what's happening is the part where I really start feeling bad is uh, there's a lot of folks that are actually having to sell off all their cattle right now or a large portion of them. You know, so for a lot of folks, especially the hobby folks, I've seen it a few times, not a ton, but people who get into these cows for hobbies, something like this, a year like this happens and they kind of get out of it for good. Now there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, I, I kind of go with two, two big things that I think cause a lot of folks to kind of lose, lose a handle on their ability to economically maintain their farm. And uh, I think I'm proud of the way we've handled our stuff this year where I think we really took care of both of these items uh, and we have preserved our farm. So we're not feeding hay yet. I know a guy about a mile down from me is starting to feed hay already because he's completely out of grass and he's actually struggling to find hay. He's having to uh, bring it in from afar. So. I think if I get down to the two key points, one of them is stocking density. So, you know, my goal with our farm is actually to get to basically 100% grazing. I don't know if I'll ever quite get there, but actually to the point where I don't even have to feed hay. And part of that is it requires me to have a lower stocking den density so I can stockpile grass uh, leading into the fall. And then, uh, I'll have plenty of grass that I can put these cows on as the fall wears on. And then by the time we get to January, February, I got my winter grasses coming in. I can graze that and basically have a little bit of hay for roughage, but that's about all I really want to get into. Um, so having all that extra acreage and not being maxed out of my stocking density has afforded me the ability that I'm not having to supplement my herd at all. Now I've gotten in a phase where I'm overgrazing a little bit to try to protect some areas uh, and that's just part of it. Uh, hopefully I can give these areas a longer rest period on the next go round. But stocking density, I think is one of those where somebody fairly new to livestock is probably gonna push the limits of their stocking density. And when you do that and you have a drought or a real wet season or whatever it might be, something outside the norm or even outside the kind of 10 year average like this year, uh, it really puts you in a bind really fast. So I know our pastures have stopped growing completely. There's no regrowth on the areas I've already grazed. And until we get some rain, that's going to continue. Hopefully it doesn't go into the fall. But I think anybody who was fully stocked to anywhere close to their maximum st uh, stocking density on their property is showing up at the sale barn right now. And I can tell you this week, uh, both of our local sale barns, and I say both, they're within an hour of where I live. Both of them had to put out notices that they couldn't accept any more cattle. They were at complete maximum capacity. People lined up thousands and thousands of cattle at these sale. Uh, you know, something like five and ten times the norm. And uh, that just kind of shows how widespread this is. And we actually have some wildfires. I could see the smoke yesterday evening. I'm going to say within less than 10 miles of here, we have some uh, wildfires in our area. So it is, it is so dry, it's hard to believe. So, like I said, probably the number one reason a lot of people are having to sell some or sell out completely is because they stock too close to their, uh, their stocking, their maximum uh, stocking density for their land probably a 50 to 100 year drought and heat wave combined. I think almost every day we're hitting like 103 to 105 right now, which is so unusual for this area. We're not even getting dews in the morning to keep grass growing. 
Uh, but yeah, anybody in that boat is in a bind. The second thing that came to fruition this, this weekend is planning ahead. So I know I've mentioned it on my channel before and a lot of people got really jealous, but I've got a standing deal with my next door neighbor. He's got a 15 acre hay field and he has a guy who cuts the field for him and then I pay the, the hay cutter guy for the hay. And uh, so that guy gets his pasture maintained. He doesn't have a tractor or anything. So he gets free cutting on his pasture. I get a good deal on the hay. The hay guy gets paid to use his equipment. So everybody seems happy. Well, this year, people are trucking in hay into our area. And because we've had a good deal, we've had a good relationship. It's stood for quite a few years now. Sure enough, they came to cut the field. He called me. He said, it's not going to make quite as much as normal, but it's all yours if you want it. So uh, my dad and I, we went and loaded it up. So this hay field hasn't been mowed or touched this year. This is the first time it got touched since uh, he cut it last October. And he got about half the hay off that field as normal. Uh, so he knew it probably wasn't enough for me. So the, the guy who cuts and bales the hay, he told me he had another field just a couple miles away. And he took care of me. He said, look, I got another 15 bales over there. You can go get them if you want. Same price. So he did go up a little bit this year. So 30 bucks a bale. And uh, we just put 63 bales of hay in our barn. And I am extremely thankful because if things don't change, I'm going to need some hay this fall. Uh, so, yeah, planning ahead and having those good relationships is kind of the other big thing that, you know, what's, what's your backup plan? I know, you know, this guy with hay, we've done it every year uh then i also have my my secondary backup plan is uh we do have a a feed mill or a uh, grain elevator not far from us and so we can get a manufactured pellet from them for pretty cheap where if i really have to stretch and start supplementing that's what i'm gonna go to um, i got hay for roughage now and if i need a little bit of uh supplementation i can go buy it for pretty inexpensive so always keep those two things in mind and I think the number one being the stocking density, because I'm telling you, if we had even 20 or 30 percent more cattle, we would be in a bind. And, you know, if I look over my field, I haven't been mowing the weeds because uh, I think right now we, we may start eating the weeds or cows may start eating the weeds because it's such a bad dry year. Uh, but I've got 300 acres. And with calves, I'm only at about 40, 40 cows or 40 head total. Um, and I've got about 50 acres cleared, something like that. I would say that I'm at about half of my stocking density for what I have in my rotation. But I also have access to some woods, which don't have a ton of feed. But you know, your cows can, can browse in the woods if they have to. And I have about 10 acres of those areas where I planted that sorghum sedan grass. So it's kind of in a state where I don't want to graze it right now because it is uh, probably stressed a little bit. It may have a little bit of prussic acid, but it's in reserve so that uh, when it does get dried up in the fall or if I need to cut it for hay, cut it and dry it, I've got, I don't know, another 10 or 15, 20 tons of, of roughage if I need it. So I always have a backup, a second backup, a third backup. But if you got cost-effective options, those are definitely the way to go. So anyway, like I said, I feel kind of bad for the folks around here who are having to sell out. But then, uh, you know, it's like any business, there is some competitiveness to it where I think, uh, you know, we want to be as efficient and effective as we can be at our business. And I think we're doing good considering uh, how bad of a year this is. So. Like I said, I feel bad for some folks, but um, it kind of reinforces a lot of the, the things we've been doing and working hard to accomplish. And so it, it does make me feel good, too, to see that we're, uh, we're definitely in the minority that, you know, I'm at a point where I'm almost considering going to find another 10 cows to uh, add to the herd for this fall and uh, be ready for next year because i got a couple more pastures I may be able to put put in our rotation come next year so anyway hope you guys are uh, surviving this heat wave and i will see you on the next one
Bye.